morning gang, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion. Today we have a doozy. Today we're going to combine a culinary experience with a filming location in one of my favorite movies. Actually, this movie is not only a favorite of mine, but this is the number one box office movie of all the Saturday Night Live movies, to my knowledge, ever made. We've done two of the locations before, and today we're going to do another location from the hit movie Wayne's World. Today, as soon as Brett gets here, Days with Jordan the Lion will kick it off, and we will go see what was Stan Makita's donuts. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. And as you can tell, this guy's ready to go to the park, so we're going to go to the park before Brett gets here. And the Shakespeare Bridge. Lots of work being done on the reservoir. So I believe now Stan Makita's is not a donut shop. I don't even know if it was a donut shop then, but it'd be pretty cool to see because we've been to uh, the actual guitar shop filming location. We've been to Wayne and Garth's house, and we've also been to the LA Arboretum where they filmed Cassandra's music video with the snake. So this will be our Actually, our fourth location for Wayne's World. And actually, one of my favorite things about the movie is the fact that Ed O'Neill, also known as Al Bundy, is in the movie. And most of his scenes, actually all of his scenes, take place where we're going today. And this location was in both movies, too. We actually had to come to the big dog park because there's not one single dog in the small one. He gets along with the big dogs. Unfortunately, it's so hot out here, none of the dogs that are out here, even the big dogs want to play. They're all kind of hanging out in the shade, so... Bummer, probably have to come out later tonight. On the other side of that fence is where we usually play. That's the uh, small dog park, and like I said, literally not one dog over there. Somebody's advertising being a puppy photographer. One dog showed up at the small dog park, so he played for a little bit with that dog, but I don't think it's gonna be too successful. I think it's just way too hot, unfortunately. All right, just had a knock at the door as soon as we got back home, and it was Amazon. Thank you, Yvonne. Says, Aloha from Hawaii. Gift from Yvonne. This is all stuff I'm hoping to get a, uh, a GoPro very soon. I mean, I'm going to get one sooner than later, within the next month or two, hopefully. And these are all um, the accessories I would need for it. It's the chest thing that you can put on. It's the head strap, the wrist strap. One for going in water, a selfie stick, it's all that. It's pretty much everything you could ever need for owning a GoPro. So, thank you so much, Yvonne. That was so nice of you. It's like a week early birthday present. Very, very nice. Thank you so much. Oh, and this is really nice. I went and checked my mailbox, and this was in my mailbox. It's a, uh, it's an SD card for my camera, and it's a gift. It says, thank you for helping me and all us lion hearts that will never get to travel. True spirit of a Leo, you are. Blessings, Georgie. Thank you. So cool of you. Well, that just means there's more footage that can be recorded and shared with the world. So thank you very much. Fight, fight. <sighs> well, speaking of Wayne's World, the interiors were done here at Paramount. So of course, Wayne's World was originally a Saturday Night Live skit, but that was almost an accident because uh, Mike Myers never really thought it would be any good. It was only the fact that being a part of Saturday Night Live, you, when you were in the writers, you, you were forced to submit an idea every single week. And so the, he just submitted that idea one week, they decided to do it and it became a hit. And Dana Carvey got the idea for basically playing Garth off of mimicking his brother. A lot of the uh, like the licorice dispenser and things like that in the movie were because the gadgets his brother would create. And they've said that Rob Lowe created his character based off of Lauren Michaels. Now, Brooke, I know you are a huge Wayne's World fan. Have you ever been to uh, where we're going today? Have not. No, we went to the uh, 
the music store about what a year ago and that's uh that was why I kind of got excited when you said we were going this way. Plus, we know Ed O'Neill, aka Al Bundy, was in these scenes. We're yeah. both big fans of those scenes, so this ought to be pretty cool. So Stan Makita's now is a Mexican restaurant, or at least it was the last time I went by there. I've never been in there, but I'm kind of curious to see if the insides are laid out the same way as they were in the movie. Though this location is in Los Angeles, it's not anywhere near us, so it's uh, kind of the outskirts of where I live and where I usually vlog. Our introduction into this scene in Wayne's World is we see the Mirthmobile driving right down this street. It's actually a crane shot because you can see this, well, it was a cycling shop then. And now the building is different. It's not all glass, but it's on the same exact property with the same steps and everything. This is where the Mirthmobile drives in and comes up here to park. So yeah, this is it's actually right here where the Mirthmobile pulls up and uh, that's where the girls are getting in the car right here and they're doing the party on Wayne. So it's a different building. In the movie, it's all glass. Um, but this is the same exact property because you can match up the, the way the front steps are. We would actually had right here, that's where when they're walking up, they run into uh, Rof Officer Kaharski and he's talking about uh, having to inspect the, uh, the tour bus of musicians that they think were smuggling in drugs. Now I was hoping, I've never been here before, but uh, I was hoping it was the same place and that we would be able to like match up how it all was and everything. But uh, it looks like, yeah, it looks like it's a totally different building. But you can match up the steps. You would have had the uh, Stan Makita would have been right up here. This is the same sign as well. And you can see, even though the building is different, you can see that address, 1300, over Garth's shoulder when the... Um, I guess it would have been right over in here is where the jukebox would have been when he's doing the foxy lady. He goes up and puts the money in the jukebox and starts playing uh, foxy lady. So all the scenes that happened here, there's actually a lot because it's in both movies. The first scene you get here is, uh, is them all showing up and Wayne's ex Stacy brings him the gun rack. So he's, he's making that speech about that, what am I going to do with a gun rack? I don't own a gun, let alone enough guns to necessitate an entire rack. And then the second time we see this place is when they get the money because they've signed the deal and Wayne is in there playing his guitar and they're trying to talk Garth into uh, asking out the woman of his dreams here. And we also, now, <laughs> why I wanted to do this one so much and why I love it is because these are all the Ed O'Neill scenes. In my opinion, I was telling my friend Carrie this the other day, this was the precursor to Creed on The Office where it was just a character that you, they walk into a conversation already happening and it's the half of the conversation that just creeps you out. Like we, we have the, uh, the, co the first thing we see out of him is when he says, uh, why is it when you kill a man in battle it's called heroic, but when you kill him in a heat of passion, it's called murder. <laughs> Crazy. So it's in here, it's, this is also, like I said, this is where um, Garth puts the money in the, uh, the jukebox and does Foxy Lady. And uh, this is also the scene where Garth and Wayne are sitting at the end of the bar and Garth is uh, made that donut man that he's like stabbing in the stomach and they're, uh, they're making up friendships and they decide they're gonna go and try and uh, win Cassandra back. But it also is in the second movie, if you remember the second movie when they're gonna put on Wayne stock, they have to go get that um, that roadie that Jim Morrison in the dream tells Wayne will help him put on this concert. And so they end up bringing the roadie here and it's actually here where the roadie tells the story of uh, the, the brown M&Ms and where they had to break into a candy shop and they end up killing the, um, the guy that owns the candy shop to get the brown M&Ms or Ozzy wouldn't go on. It's like insane. So. This was, uh, it was actually, yeah, it was in both movies, both Wayne's World 1 and 2, and you would have seen like the uh, the Makita, 
up here with the rotating hockey stick. It's just kind of cool that the steps are still the same, even if nothing else is. We'll still go in and take a look. Right here is also one of my favorite scenes. It's actually from the second movie because this is the drive through scene. And this is when the guys pull up and you see the sign says, if they screw up your order, your order's free. So they're trying to do the broken speaker trick where they're like dropping out half their words when they're placing their order. And they're, everybody in the car is kind of doing it. So it's funny when they, uh, when they get done with the order and the, um, the guy says, can, can you, uh, what was the last thing you said? And he goes, oh, I think your speaker's broken. And then the guy repeats back the order verbatim the way it was supposed to be. Just total classic comedy. Now, apparently, we just ran into somebody here. He saw us out filming, and he said that the, uh, the owner of this place totally embraces the Wayne's World aspect to it. So we're going to go in and get a bite to eat. I'm going to treat Breck to a, uh, a meal here. Well, yeah, it's definitely different. They would have had the, uh, the donut, like the, the bar and everything would have been up through here. So it's totally different building, but uh, cool nonetheless. Cool, they have a little juice counter in here as well as uh, tacos and coffee and all that stuff. I think I'm gonna go with like a chicken burrito or something like that. So now that we've been inside looking around, we know for sure that there's no way this is the original building in any way. I was 99% sure. I was like, maybe they could have altered it or, or something, but no, definitely not the same building, but definitely the same property. All right, we already got our complimentary chips and salsa. All right, our food showed up. We both got the, uh, the wet chicken burrito, but I got guacamole and sour cream on mine. I'm excited to try this. Mine's awesome. Breck, how's yours? You like it? Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you get two in one, a great meal and a great filming location if you come here. Right now you're looking at an original photo from the time that they filmed the movie. And when I pull it away, you'll see what that exact spot looks like now. And if you notice, those signs right over here are still there. Same exact poles, they're just different. They're white back then. And there was a, uh, instead of the name of the restaurant where we just ate, it actually says, uh, well, it has a picture of a bunch of donuts. But you would have had right up in here, what it said, Stan Makita's Donuts. Yep. So what we noticed is that the shape of the building is somewhat similar, but since the entire building was all glass, there's no way it could be the same. Plus we noticed that, um, you know, the movies were made in like 91, 92, and this restaurant came here, says down here in the corner, established in 1996, so we were kind of thinking that's probably when they did uh, the big changeover. But I don't care. I think this was so cool to get to see where Stan Makita's Donuts was. Love that movie. And the food was good. And I do find it ironic, I was telling Breck, that when they first pull in, you can tell that this used to be a, um, a bike shop and now it's a like a spin class like a cycling for exercise so it's somewhat similar to what it was even back then so right about here in the original movie on the other side of this is when where the jukebox would have been that you would have seen Garth doing the foxy lady he would have been walking that way Well, I wouldn't necessarily say this is a dangerous area, but it's also probably not the safest because as Breck and I were walking down the sidewalk, somebody yelled out their car for us to get our white um, Blank. blanks out of here. <laughs> All right, Inglewood, we're out of here. Yeah, I've been down to this area quite a bit. I used to work down here. Never had anybody yell out the window or make any threats, so, but you never know. Yeah, this was a really great vlog. The people that own the, um, the restaurant now are really nice. The food was really good. The people that we met inside were really cool. So, man, it was pretty awesome. Well, my friends, I'm going to call it a day. Hope you guys enjoyed getting to see that location today. That's just... For me, man, that's like sacred ground. Other than, you know, like I said, other than Married with Children back in the day, that was really the only thing you could see Ed O'Neill on, and he was just so good in it, and it was like, 
For me, I just love that sense of humor, that precursor to Creed on The Office, where you just say the most outlandishly creepy thing, and there's no introduction to it. I always thought that humor was cool, and that was pretty much probably the first time I ever saw it. So, there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you're in the area, go by and have a meal there. It was really good. Have a great night, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.